Welcome to Maxify Planner. This is a brief tutorial to help get you started setting up a profile and navigating the tool. Let's begin by selecting Get Started. We'll be using a sample case of a married couple named Jack and Sarah. They have no children. And we'll assume they're the same age. As you proceed, the program will periodically remind you what data you've already entered. Let's assume Jack and Sarah both set their retirement ages at 69. Jack can come back later and change his retirement age. Then we have Jack and Sarah enter maximum ages of life. The maximum age of life is the maximum age to which Jack and Sarah may live. It's not their life expectancy, the average age at which they might die. We want to plan for the possibility of Jack and Sarah living as long as possible for a simple reason. They might. Maxify now asks me to enter Jack's relevant financial information. This includes his current job, what he's earning, what he expects to earn, any pensions or annuities, his current retirement accounts, and his social security benefit information. Let's assume Jack's making $70,000 a year and will continue to earn the same amount adjusted for inflation until he retires at 69. If Jack expects his earnings to change down the road, he'll click here and specify the change. This lets him model a phase retirement. If Jack has a second job, he should click Save and Add Another Job and tell Maxify about the new job. We'll assume Jack doesn't have a pension, so we'll click Not Applicable. If he did, however, and you wanted to add that information later, select Applicable, but skip for now. We'll do the same thing for annuities. On the Social Security page, take a look at the key filing dates up top. Scroll down to enter your past covered earnings. If you are not yet retired, and therefore expect earnings in the future, you can download an XML document with your earnings record from ssa.gov and upload it into our software. Alternatively, see this video on importing past covered earnings from the SSA site and note that the earnings record tab has moved to the right of the SSA site. Both methods take only minutes. If you've finished working and will not have future earnings, the program can use your benefit estimate provided to you by Social Security. Finally, if you have already filed and are currently receiving existing benefits, you would enter the information in this section. Just remember that existing benefits only refers to your main Social Security retirement benefit, not spousal benefits you may be receiving. Like all the inputs, it's easy to come back and modify your Social Security inputs later. Since Jack and Sarah are a made-up case, we will manually enter their earnings records. Select Modify Plan Dates to customize your filing dates. For now, we'll use the default dates. We'll assume Jack and Sarah each have an IRA of $500,000. We'll assume no contributions or withdrawals are occurring at this time. If you have multiple accounts, just select Save and add another account. We'll repeat the same process with Sarah. And we'll assume she's a mechanical engineer making $125,000 a year. By leaving the annual increase shown here at zero, the program will assume she gets a cost of living increase each year going forward. If we inputted 1%, for example, that would mean we expect her annual salary to outpace inflation. 0% means it keeps pace with inflation. Again, she has no pensions or annuities. We'll manually enter her past covered earnings record like before. and add in her $500,000 IRA. If she has a Roth or employer-based account, she would select these options. We've now finished entering all the information exclusive to each person. We'll continue by entering information that applies to Jack and Sarah as a family, like housing. We're going to assume Jack and Sarah live in Kansas in a $400,000 house. We'll add their property tax, insurance, 
maintenance, and mortgage information. Let's pretend they just refinanced on a 30-year mortgage and they have a monthly mortgage payment of $1,194. If you are planning on changing your housing situation, just select Add Housing Change, specify the year, and enter the relevant information. For now, we'll assume they aren't going to move from their current home. If Jack and Sarah had any additional real estate, we'd enter it in this section. They don't, so we'll select Not Applicable. The Special Receipts and Special Expenses pages are extremely useful features where you can indicate receipts such as inheritance or a gift, and special payments such as college costs, weddings, and other major life expenses down the road. In the regular Assets section, enter any non-retirement money you have, like a brokerage account. This section also includes the cash values of any life insurance policies you may have. Great! Now we are ready to generate our base plan. Here we see that the program has calculated Jack and Sarah's lifetime budget. On the left side of this table, you see all of Jack and Sarah's lifetime economic resources, which total to this number. On the right-hand side, you see how Jack and Sarah allocate their lifetime resources. The key figure here is this one in orange. It shows Jack and Sarah's lifetime discretionary spending, how much the couple can spend over and above covering their fixed expenses, including all life insurance premiums and mortgage payments. Maxify's lifetime budgeting is done in present value so that dollars in the future can be compared with dollars today. Make sure to read through this text shown in the walkthrough. Once you understand the fundamentals of the program, you can later just click skip and go to the details. The orange line in this chart shows that Maxify has solved the big question, how to smooth Jack and Sarah's discretionary spending every year in the future. The orange line shows the couple's annual discretionary spending. We can see it remains steady over time while their income and fixed spending changes. Were Jack and Sarah facing one or more periods of cash constraints over their lifetimes, the orange line would be flat for a period and then be flat at a higher level once the constraint, like paying off their mortgage, was lifted. The regular asset saving and withdrawal page shows how much Jack and Sarah should contribute and withdraw from their regular assets to maintain a smooth discretionary spending path, represented by that steady orange line shown on the previous page. Think of this as a savings bucket that the family puts money in and takes out to keep its discretionary spending on track. Likewise, the program gives life insurance suggestions to maintain their discretionary spending. Now Jack and Sarah have a couple options. First, they can look at their detailed results. This is highly recommended. They can see all the suggestions for their base plan shown in either a chart or in a table. This table is extremely important. It tells Jack and Sarah exactly how much to save and spend, and also how much life insurance to buy on an annual basis. You can download a PDF of this report by clicking here at the top of the page. Let's return to the other options now that we have a base plan. Go to the bar up top and select Reports. Here you have the option of running a maximized plan which optimizes the base plan over several variables, including social security and retirement withdrawals. If you purchase the premium version of Maxify, this risk analysis report will help you understand the riskiness of your spending and investment decisions. Both the maximization and risk analysis reports are covered in separate tutorial videos. Now let's imagine we want to go back and change an input to the base plan. Maybe we forgot that Jack, in fact, does have a small pension. In that case, we need to restore a dismissed input. We'll click on Jack in the Profile Data menu, click Restore Pension, and add a $25,000 annual pension starting the year he retires. Let's also go to Settings and Assumptions to see that the program includes default values for the inflation rate and the safe rate of return on regular assets. You can change these inputs as you'd like. Now what if we wanted to create a new report 
based on changes to the information we entered for the base plan. Simply go to the top of the program and select Profile, and then click Add Alternative Profile. This will let you create a different profile, which you can run and compare with the results from your base profile. As an example, you can run a comparison report showing an earlier retirement date or a decision to downsize your home at an earlier point. Once you set up a new profile with a new name, you can adjust the inputs from those in the base profile by using the Profile Data menu on the left. After creating this new profile, select it in the Profile drop-down to run a comparison report. This allows you to run alternatives to the base profile and see the results side by side. We cover alternative profiles in more depth in another video. Let's finish by selecting Reports. Just remember, this link always provides access to the last report that you ran. Let's run the base plan again, go through the walkthrough, and get to the full details of the report. We'll go to the Help Center by clicking the Help icon at the top right. You can go here anytime you get stuck. Here you can see our extensive FAQ section, and scroll down to see our glossary for the terms used in the program, like discretionary spending. You can also open a support ticket here. We hope this video has been helpful. Thank you again for choosing Maxify Planner.